Hi, I'm Teacher Alicia, and for today's video, we're going to take a look at an actual book book class. So those of you that have been hired through VIP Kit to teach BookNook, we have not been given the same opportunity as if you were hired through BookNook. If you are hired directly through BookNook, they take you through some uh, courses that will show you exactly what the classroom looks like, what you're expected to teach, um, and just help you through that whole process. First, I need to say that I am just a teacher with BookNook. BookNook has not hired me to put a, out these videos, to produce them. Um, I am simply doing this to help other teachers like me who started out with a lot of questions and no answers. I'm just going to go through a BookNook classroom and show you how to log in, uh, what it looks like, go through the slides. Most all of the BookNook slides um, and lessons are about the same. They might have some different questions, but generally the same. But however, I'm not telling you how to teach the lesson. That is totally up to you and your style and what you'd like to do. I would just like to give you an idea of what the classrooms look like. Right. So to give you a quick background, the reason why I'm able to do this is I do have some students that didn't show up for a class today. And because they didn't show up for a class, um, I am at the end of the lesson and um, I am just going to take a look at this lesson as if the students were here. Um, so I'm not uh, doing this during my class time and uh, I'm not doing this while I have live students in here. So on this very first page, um, these normally you have three students and they will be asked, how are you feeling? And lots of times in these boxes, you'll see come up, some of them say they're feeling bad, <clears throat> they're feeling good, um, it's okay. <laughs> I'd like to take that opportunity at that time to say to them, okay, so why are you happy? Um, just to get some general, um, ask them some questions about it. So like I had somebody ask me about their students, um, you will have the same students every week. Uh, Booknook tries to encourage you to have a relationship with your students because they see the benefits of that so that you get to know your students, you know what to expect of them, how they're learning, what they might need to work on, so that it's not a different student every week. So whenever these questions come up and how they're feeling, I try to create uh, a relationship with them, find out how they are, what did they do for the weekend. All right, so once they've done this and everybody's entered the classroom, also just a note, there are times where you may not have every student show up. Maybe you only have one. Um, and I was sometimes will wait to see if the other students show up. I'll ask that student, do they know, you know, are their classmates coming? Um, and sometimes they can tell you, um, but either way, whenever you hit this go to lesson, whenever the computer picks up that not everybody has signed in, it will ask you, oh no, do you want to keep waiting? Well, you have the choice. Uh, yes, you'd like to go on or no, keep waiting. If you know that you want to go on, just click yes. All right, and here's Moby. So in this lesson, you'll see here are, um, for this one, we're talking about multisyllabic words into syllables, and it gives you the breakdown. And you can click these. Turtle. Each one. Tur. <laughs> of those sound things and you have a choice you can either use them or you say them out yourself um, I like to have the students then repeat that back and again the same thing here we're talking about the silent E and then we go on to this all right so here is um, another thing that I do if you start this activity, it says the students are waiting for your activity to start. Sometimes I've found out that that's not exactly true. Some of them are able to see the activity um, and you don't have to start, but you have to hit that start button to show you what the progress is. All right, and then you can see by hitting up here in this corner, the preview activity, you can see what it is that they're seeing. 
All right, so if you have a student that might be struggling with something, they might say, I don't understand, then you're able to get on here and see exactly what it is. So they're choosing words that have two syllables. And um, you don't have to go through and pick these out and do this, but it just gives you an idea of the correct ones, of course. <laughs> and then when they finish that slide, up will come green dots if they got them all right, or red dots if they got them wrong. All right, but once they've finished it, they cannot, they cannot change it. However, you will see here that let's say they're asking you for help and you go in and you, you try to help them and they accidentally pick this one. And you're like, well, see, you can't see what they're doing, but through talking to them, if you find out if they picked food, oh, that's not right. You, you can click on it to change that one thing, or you can hit this refresh button and that will change all of them back and they can start all over again, all right? They might need that how to unclick or choose the right one after they've picked the right the wrong one, all right? And again, it will pick up and see that, oh, you should be still waiting, but no, we wanna move ahead. Now we're moving on to word ladder. Again, this is another activity that they do and we're going to start that activity. And then here you see at the bottom, they have four questions this time. And each one of those will come up either red or green, saying they got it right or wrong. Let's take a look at that in our preview activity. And here we're just adding the missing letters, the missing sounds for the end or for the beginning. All right. And again, if a student asks you, you're just seeing what they are seeing. You're not actually seeing them do it. However, if they get stuck on something, you're able to help them with that. And of course, like I said, you don't have to do that yourself. It just gives you an idea of what they're seeing. And we'll go on to the next page. And then it's our book time. All right. And this book in particular, sometimes it'll come up with more information. It might tell you how many pages are in the book. And you realize if you open up a book and it's got 29 pages in it, um, I had a book yesterday that had 40 pages in it. You realize then you're going to have to move a little bit quicker through those things. Maybe not spend as much time on the questions at the end if you're running out of time. Um, or if you know you have enough time, you can spend giving each student uh, a chance to read. At least that's what I do. So here with these bubbles, these orange bubbles, these are questions you will ask your question, your students, I'm sorry, ask your students, and you work through the book. All right, and, and like I said, I'll have, if I have more than one student, I'll let each one of them take a turn in reading the book if I only have one student and it's me, I will ask them, would you like me to help you to read? Um, or would you like to read the whole thing? I give them that chance. Um, as they go through it, one thing I don't like, um, as with VIP Kid, you are able to underline words that they're missing uh, or mispronouncing um, and go back and look at them after they're finished reading. However, uh, with this, you might need to stop them um, and help them with that word that they're mispronouncing. Um, if there's any corrections you need to make, you might have to do it right away because um, it's kind of hard to go back and give them a point of reference like, oh, if they miss the word ankle, once they've read that whole thing and you go back and try and find the word ankle, you don't have any way to show them that. Um, you could possibly go over into your chat and type that word down um, and show them then, okay, this word is ankle. That's just another way to do it. Um, lots of times I will stop them if they say it wrong and I will say it right for them. You can ask them your own questions. As you see, there was no orange bubbles that came up and there weren't any questions and you can make up your own questions. I lots of times do just to check for reading comprehension. And once you're done, you can actually look if you have time to go over some of these uh, like high frequency words. Um, maybe you could pick out some of these phonics element words and then we close the book it'll ask if you're done and then it'll ask you 
or give you example questions. You could ask these things to your students. Makes it pretty easy. This walks you right through it. And now let's practice. Down here at the bottom in student progress, you will see that they have four slides that they will need to go through. And it says here, uh, please let the students answer questions on their own. Um, in my experience, I've had some students, like I said, that are that are Spanish speaking and it, they're really struggling. I kind of hate to let them. I won't give them the answers, but I can help them with you know some things like reading the directions. Maybe they don't know what they're supposed to do. So if they ask you like, what is this one on the third slide? You have to go through this yourself. You cannot forward it to the third slide to see what they're seeing. You have to go through this whole process of answering one, two, and then getting to three. So um, it's a good idea to actually take the time as they are going through each one so you can uh, help them with it or memorize, okay, what was on that page. So this one here, how many syllables do you hear, ball? Um, you answer it, it goes through the stars, then it brings up the next one. <laughs> um, you answer it, it goes through the stars. So it takes a little bit, say, to get to that third page um, to know what they're asking about. Uh, it's not just something like you'll instantly see what it is or um, be able to forward to. All right, I thought I'd give you that heads up. If there is something else, some other way, because like I said, I have, um, I have just like you fumbled my way through this just as much um, as other VIP Kid users. However, people that have taken the course uh, through Book Nook themselves, if you're watching this and you have a better way of doing this, please don't hesitate to let me know that there is another way or alternative to doing this. So moving on here, we're able to go to the next page. And then we have our closing. All right, so you should be wrapping up around that, the half hour mark. Um, unless your students came in late, you obviously are able to go longer if you don't have any classes that are over that time. Um, but don't end it sooner. All right, let me take you through this next section um, and then we'll talk about if they leave early. So here you'll see each student has uh, where you put in their feedback, you know, and if the student's not there, I just say, an A or, you know, they were absent and I move on to the next student. All right, and for, as far as the feedback goes, I will just say, uh, like, Manuel did a super job today in class. He paid attention, he was able to, uh, or he participated well, um, he read part of the story and had good pronunciation. Um, and he answered a lot of the questions correctly. Um, I just try to give that kind of encouraging thing. Um, I actually don't know who sees this. I don't know if another teacher sees it or if the students actually will, you know, the teacher will show it to them. I'm not sure, but I try and make it encouraging. All right, and here at the end, it'll give you the students' progress and you'll see, did they pass? Well, obviously nobody was here. <laughs> so they didn't pass. And I've never seen this really affect like who's in your classroom, whether or not they passed, and then you're all done. And once you're all done, it will take you back to uh, your home screen in BookNook. All right. And then to close it down from there, you will go to end and end your meeting for all. This is where I just want to make a note that, okay, so let's say um, like I frequently will have a student who her teacher lots of times will end it, you know, at 25 minutes in, she's moving on to the next thing. I mean, that's the way her classroom is and that's what has to happen. So I do not, however, close the uh, Zoom with that until 30 minutes are up. All right. Um, because you know, that's, that's what's required of you. For me, Book Nook says you have to be there for 30 minutes, whether the student's there or not. So what I will do, let's jump back to my shared screen. 
and um, over here, I let this up. So if they leave, they say goodbye, you say goodbye, and um, they're gone, I will leave Zoom up until you are 30 minutes in. Once you are 30 minutes in, then I will end that meeting for all. So I hope that helps you in seeing what an actual Booknote classroom looks like so you know what kind to expect and what you might teach through that. Not every lesson is the same, but it is the same format. It is the same setup. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions, again, leave them down below, and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can or make another video. You guys have a great day. Thanks. Ba 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 ba